Three weeks into September and still no senior championship trophies handed out in men's GEA. Hopefully today we'll resolve part of that. It's the 2012 All-Ireland Football Final. It's Donegal versus Mayo and the throw-in is at 3.30. Hello and you're very welcome indeed to Croke Park on this special day. Well, this of course is what it's all about, the Sam Maguire Cup. And despite its many famous journeys down through the years, a precious few of them have been to today's participating counties. Now Sam has been in Mayo just three times, the last of course in 1951. And on the other hand, there's been that single visit to Donegal in 1992. Well today, those long years of waiting will be over for one of them. hope now that um, we know that we've come this far, we can sort of finish the job off. We'd be confident that if we can play like we can, we'll, we'll, we'll go very close. It's an opportunity, and yes, Johnny Goal of the champions once again. What about the finish? It's over the bar. It is Mayo's title. Well, All-Ireland final day has uh, its own special buzz and colour to it. But this year, with this unique pairing in the final, with the whole atmosphere surrounding the big matches even greater than usual. Well, they've come from far and wide for today's final, and many of these fans have made the journey, of course, not just across the country, but indeed across the globe as well. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one, I have to say. And so too are my studio guests, Joe Bradley, Pat Spillane and Colin Morugue. Gentlemen, you're very welcome to All Ireland Final Day. Joe, talking to people coming into this match and all through the week, they're saying, oh, it's a hard one to call. It's going to be very tight. And then you push them on it. They say, I think Donegal might shade it. I think it's just because of their, uh, the absolute composure they've shown in every game they've played. And also the fact that people find it difficult when they look at them logically to see how they're going to be beaten. I mean, they are a very difficult team to break. That's not to say that they can't be beaten. On but historically, fact. one All-Ireland in history, does that yeah, but, count for you know, Well, I suppose Jim McGuinness wasn't around then, you know. And mm. But I think that, there, you know, a day like today, you know, when you just said, you know, people all over the world, the, the linchpin of Irish society all over the world is the GAA. You know, it's a far stronger cement than the church or any other mm -hmm. organisation that there's been. And, you know, that unique sense of family that it brings and this being the most important day in the calendar i mean outside today you know i stood outside just soaking up the atmosphere and there's an atmosphere of great camaraderie yeah. and excitement although <clears throat> my old fans are not happy with me but <laughs> none, nonetheless it, <laughs> no, no a, fans are happy with you he <laughs> wouldn't pay me if it was <laughs> nice to people and uh, but it's a terrific day and you know we must say hello to people all over the world Absolutely. and just i mean it's a day to bask in the atmosphere and with the height of respect, Pat, to your own county, Kerry, and other counties like that, it's fantastic to see counties like Mayo and Donegal, a unique pair, first time ever in a lot well, of First final. of all, it was great that Dublin won last year because mm. they, you know, a million people based in Dublin and they raised the profile of the GA in the capital and the players, the Dublin players were fantastic ambassadors for the GA over the last 12 months. But today is an extra special day because I think any sport thrives on new teams at the, at the, at the final and to see two new counties here, one 61 years yeah. of a family, and the other 20 years. I think it's absolutely fantastic. It's <coughs> great for the GA, it's great for the sport, it's great for the association. And remember, there are two counties that are you know, two of the most peripheral counties in, in Ireland. There are two counties who've been ravaged by generations of immigration. Yeah. There are two counties that the Celtic Tiger never really touched and yet you know there's a resilience about them there's good nature about them and the J is the one bond that has always kept these two counties together and kept the pride in the county so i'm and looking forward to this a great day it's a great occasion and your own county column of course uh, you were part of that team that broke those barren years as well 
And today, from your point of view, it's also special because you're part of the Meath Jubilee team. Yes, it's nice to be honoured. I think it's a lovely thing that the GEA does. We had a, a lunch earlier. Um, we're going to be presented to the crowd uh, after the minor game. I don't know what sort of reception we get. I hope, oh, people, have, I hope people have short memories about some <laughs> of the fellows that played. But we came along at a period of change where Kerry had dominated in Dublin the previous sort of decade. And really, I think Donegal and Mayo are coming in a period of change too mm. because the old powers have sort of fallen. Kerry, Tyrone... Dublin, we thought last year might build on it, and Cork don't seem to be able to put it back to back either. So there is a period of change. There's an opportunity for a new county, and whoever wins today, I don't th think anyone no. would, be, would begrudge it to them. Oh, there's no doubt about that. And as we've been mentioning, it's a first All Ireland final between these two counties. But in truth, uh, the prospect just two years ago of either of them being in the final anytime soon looked pretty remote. Dar Maloney has been reflecting on those past 24 months and on the journey that Donegal and Mayo have made to get to Croke Park today. Donegal versus Mayo in an All-Ireland final. Who would have believed it? Well, certainly not the pundits anyway. I'll say Kerry. Kerry as well, they are the best footballers. I think Cork might creep back up. Two years ago, both counties found themselves cast adrift. Mayo crashed out of the 2010 championship at the hands of Longford. While Donegal's ground zero arrived in a first round qualifier via a nine point drubbing from Armagh in Cross Maglen. And Raddy's in there, so too is Clark. Clark has the chance and Clark scores. There was nothing at the time to suggest with the appointment of Jim McGuinness that Donegal were about to change the face of Gaelic football. But slowly the wheel turned. Words like discipline, focus, commitment, work rate and belief all came to the surface. And a team of perennial underachievers had all of a sudden bagged an Anglo-Celt and set off for Croke Park with a newfound confidence. They've waited 19 years. Year one finished with disappointment, but they knew they were close, very close. Meanwhile, in Mayo, the appointment of James Horan was equally low-key. The same buzzwords that had been complicit in Donegal's rebirth were there again with James Horan's side. A fright in Ryslip acted as a catalyst for them to win Connacht, but it wasn't until Cork were dethroned that people started to sit up and take notice. Kevin McLaughlin, great chance, great goal! Now with another Connacht title secured and for the second year running they've knocked out the defending All-Ireland champions, they return to the final for the first time since 06. Pat Gilroy's champions are no more and Mayo will get a crack at Donegal. So will Sam head for the hills for the first time since 1992 or is he heading west to Mayo for the first time since 1951? Romantic Ireland is alive and well and will be unveiled in all its glory at 3.30 today as two young teams, two young managers and two counties starved of success chase the dream of being champions. The greatest prize in Gaelic football awaits one of them. The rest of us will look on in wonder. We will for sure. Dara Maloney on Donegal and Mayo is packed to this year's All-Ireland Football <coughs> Final. You know, one of the things for two football counties like Mayo and Donegal, it's hard to believe, Joe, that Donegal have won one All-Ireland and Mayo, of course, back to the early 50s since they won. Well, of course, you know, when they're really died in the wool, Gaelic like football counties yeah. and Mayo, you know, both big counties too, and particularly in Mayo, with huge football and population and great traditions, and they've always sent out great footballers. I mean, John McEntee said to me during the week, he said the best football teams that we ever came up against during you know during this great cross McGlen run of the last twenty years. He said the best teams we came up against were the Mayo teams. Mm, mm. You know, but they just weren't ruthless enough to finish it off. And the difference now, of course, is that as James Horan said, and this is why the advent of someone like Horan was so important for Mayo, he says we must take the chance out of Gaelic football. You can't just go out any longer, play the game and see where it takes you. For yeah. example, like Cork, very, very good footballers, very carry exactly the same. You know, you know, see those traditional style of managers like Mick O'Dwyer, they are so outdated now, it's not for real. I mean, this is a totally different scientific process. And, you know, it's the teams that have managers like Tim McGuinness and James Warren that are going to prosper in the future and counties with the resources to back those managers and what it is that they need. Because everything's put under the microscope, and I mean everything. Systems yeah. well, versus yeah, it's football? A, it's a fair point, but I mean, actually, what Dara mentioned there, two years ago, I mean, these two counties went out of the championship in the qualifiers on the same night. Mayo tamely uh, to Longford and Armagh hammering Donegal. A poor Armagh team. A poor Armagh team. Now, 
pretty much a lot of those same players are now back in the All Ireland final. And the reason they're back in the All Ireland final is yes, the managers and yes, the systems and all that. But the big difference is now with the Mayo players and with the Donegal players. First of all, it's the power of the collective. They're a unit. Mm -hmm. There's no individuals there. There's no prima donnas. There's nothing. It's the power of the collective. But number two, it's belief because this is this is what's different about the Donegal players and the Mayo players of this year. There's a belief in themselves. There's a belief in their players, in their teammates, and there's a belief in the managers and the managers' philosophy. And if you're looking for a norm, and I see, I was looking at it today in the paper, Mayo, the last time Mayo won the All-Ireland, they beat a team wearing green and gold, meet. They won the All-Ireland on this date in mm -hmm. 1951, September the 23rd. The referee in 1951 was from Leash, as is today. And not alone that, but he was from the same club, Stradbally. So maybe the Omens, maybe it's in the stars that it's Mayo's day. Who How knows? much does that element of belief matter, Colin? Because again, going back to your own team, you played for Mead for years, you're going nowhere. Sean Boylan comes in, he does something different, and the next thing it all kind of takes off. Yeah, well, I think that the manager is more important than any individual player. And I think uh, Sean Boylan was more important to us than any player. And if you look back, I think, on Mayo and Donegal, in your traditional view, Mayo would be looked on as a bit soft. Yes. And when you really put the bull gun to their head, they often failed. And the traditional view of Donegal, even over the last decade, would be wild men. And Jimmy McGuinness has come in and has sort of tamed and Jimmy was them. one of them. <laughs> yes. And his day. I remember him wrestling with Declan Butter one night at an awards oh, ceremony yeah. when Declan was the manager of the team. Yes, yeah, so you, you, you yeah, have so that tradition of you. Yeah. And sometimes and nice guys <laughs> finished. Nice guys finished Some, last. But yeah. sometimes yeah. too, I think the two McGees are a good example of it. They were wild in their younger. Yes. They'd be the yes. first to admit that. Now they've come to a time in life when they realise that the opportunities in football are quite limited. Time is running out, and there's a different focus. So you, sometimes you need players to work through that themselves. You can't put a young, an old head on young shoulders. Sure. Well, you know, that's one of the most enjoyable things about uh, big championship occasions is watching the rival fans mingle and interact around the match venue. Plenty of banter, plenty of slagging too, but of course always conducted in the right uh, sport.